everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to take you through the Escada Summer Perfume range. If you're new here, then welcome to my channel. It's all about perfumes. Do subscribe for more videos. I'm doing content every week all about different perfume ranges, reviews, and I do love to read all your requests and I try and do as many request videos as possible, so please let me know in the comments below. So Escada every year release a limited edition summer perfume. They're all of a kind of like a tropical fun summery vibe, but they all have different ingredients. So I have a list of 11 here for you, going all the way back to 2011. And all the ones that I'm covering are ones that you can still buy on some perfume websites. I didn't want to include ones that are just impossible to find because then it's just like kind of pointless. So everything I'm going to talk about is linked down below in the descriptions. As always, you can go and check it out. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start off with the most popular one. When I used to work selling perfume, I used to get asked for this all the time, maybe almost once a week. Um, this was always the one that people wanted from Escada, and it is Escada Sexy Graffiti. This originally came out a long time ago, and then they, I guess due to popular demand, brought it back in 2011, and people went mad for it. It's raspberry, it's strawberry, there's some grapefruit in the initial spray, but then it's got some nice vanilla warm notes in here, as well as some cashmere and some musk, a little bit of lily of the valley. So essentially, in that first spray, it's like a fruity cocktail, but in the dry down, you really get like some sweetness of vanilla. So it really is like a summer party. For me, this is like the ultimate hot summer fragrance. You can't really go wrong with this if you just want like a fun summer vibe fragrance and hopefully they will re-release it again so it's going to be in all the stores again you know fingers crossed because I'm sure people are still asking for it but you can still buy it um, and this is probably the most popular and potentially my favorite from the whole range. So also in 2011 we got Taj Sunset. Now this is sort of evoking like that Indian sunset, that heat of the of that deserty climate. Essentially it's mango and it's nectarine, but there's some nice blood orange in here, you know, very orangey type uh, fruits in here. Then you've got coconut, water lily, and some musky woody notes in the base. So this does feel like an Indian sunset. Taj Sunset is definitely the right name for this. At first you're getting those nectarine orangey, and then it goes into that sort of woody. You can just imagine as the sun slowly disappearing. Like it just makes you feel like you're on holiday. Then also in 2011 they brought out Escada Island Kiss. Now this also has lots of mango in it, but I say this is a slightly fresher version than Taj Sunset. It's got peach, red berries, magnolia, so it's a bit more lighter, playful. Perhaps you'd wear this during the day and then Taj Sunset at night. Kind of juicy, almost aquatic, with a little hint of floral, fresh, like girly vibes for this one. And then the last one that came out in 2011 was Rock in Rio. So this is very much those like South American Brazilian notes, papaya, nectarine, pineapple, peach. It's kind of like how you would imagine a sort of pineapple-y papaya cocktail to smell like, taste like. You're on a beach bar in Brazil, in Rio. This is what it smells like to be there. So if you're a fan of those papaya type notes, then it's quite unusual to get papaya so strong in a perfume as well. And um, this is definitely the one for you. So almost like a greeny, fruity, summery smell. So all those ones that came out in 2011 carried through into 2012. And then in 2013, they stopped um, publicizing them and brought out a new one, which is Escada Cherry in the Air. This is like an ultimate sweet cherry perfume. It's cherry, it's marshmallow, it's vanilla, bit of raspberry in there. But this is for people who like that sweet cherry, you know, very girly. Reminds me of um, a perfume I had, I think when I was about 10, that was like a Barbie perfume or something. Like really, really sweet marshmallowy cherry, cherry, very innocent, obviously sweet. Um, fruity sweet and um, not as like tropical as the ones from 2011, more like sweet vibes, gourmand vibes. 
Then in 2014, we got Born in Paradise, which is sort of back to the tropics. It's coconut predominantly. You've got pineapple, you've got watermelon, and you've got guava. So really like beach bar, tropical cocktail again. Those sort of aquatic-y fruits like guava that you get in those hot climates. And of course, watermelon, you know, is predominantly made up of water. So it's like a fresh, fruity, tropical, paradise. So in 2016 we then got turquoise summer. So this is like a red berry type cocktail smell. You've got strawberry, raspberry, black currant and then mixed in with that you've got melon and pineapple and then as the base comes through it's like a vanilla, like a milky caramel vanilla. Think like if you took a milky vanilla latte and mixed it with um, red berries and then put pineapple in. <laughs> so it's like a, I guess like a pina colada but a berry version because um, of that milky base. Um, so yeah, again, really reminds me of a cocktail um, in a tropical island. Quite a lot of things going on here so it's difficult to pick out one fragrance note from all of them. It just all comes together like a big fruit punch um, but perhaps those red berry notes kind of win slightly but yeah fruit punch is a good way of describing it I think with that milkiness. So 2016 we got Agua del Sol. Now this is like an ice cream sorbet in a perfume. Imagine an apricot, raspberry and sort of tropical mixed fruit sorbet that's what this smells like so you do get those like that sweetness that you get in a sorbet and a bit of that ice creaminess then all these like tropical notes but then what's also really nice is you've got tonka bean and musk in the base along with some woody and a slight hint of rose so it stops it from literally just smelling like sorbet um that's all very much in the top and the middle notes but those sort of tonka beans help make this um get those perfumey vibes i really like this one it's interesting it's different and it just feels like you're on holiday. So in 2017 we get Fiesta Carioca, I think I'm pronouncing that right. This is all about passion fruit. So you've got passion fruit, passion flower, then some musky raspberry notes underneath and then more floral notes than in its predecessors, some little bit of jasmine, orange blossom and a little bit of violet leaf. So this is probably the most like slightly floral but it's still not a floral perfume it's still passion passion fruit passion flower um but nice if you want something that's slightly more floral nicer during the day pretty and then the passion fruit just makes it fun and tropical in 2018 we got sorbetto rosso which is a watermelon fragrance and really aquatic -y, freshy watery notes along with that watermeloniness. They've added pear, they've added green apple, really get those like f wateriness that you get in some fruits. That's very much what this is like, very very refreshing. If you live in a very hot climate this would be great as a way to just spray something that's like super watermelony and refreshing and it kind of feels like it's cooling you down. There's a little bit of sea salt, praline, amber, even a bit of rose all in the base um, but that really is a supporting note. They're not main notes, they're not the stars of the show, the watermelon is but I guess if it was just like aquatic -y notes then it wouldn't really last so you need those in the base but yeah this is definitely one of the most refreshing. And then finally 2019 we have Miami Blossom. This is pineapple, watermelon, orange and blueberry. So quite a mix of different fruits. Again, you've got a musky base with some jasmine, some tuberose, a little bit of wood. Whereas all the other ones have been very tropical, I would say that this is more like a typical perfume because of those like other notes, those floral notes that are similar to other perfumes. And then adding the pineapple and the watermelon, yes, makes it that little bit Escada tropical, but it's not as tropical as a lot of its predecessors. So I guess I can see why it's kind of Miami Blossom because yes, Miami is sort of near the tropics, but it is still like a city, you know, it's not necessarily a place you go on holiday, you might go for business. So I can see where the name comes from on this. It's a bit more like a practical perfume whereas a lot of the others are like you're on a beach drinking a cocktail you don't have a care in the world <laughs> 
So that's my rundown. Let me know if you wore any of these in the past, um, which is your favourite. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. I just think it's so cool how they have a different one each year and they always have such colourful bottles and packaging and it's just fun and female and girly and summer, just, just celebrating the happiness of summer I think. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you found it useful, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more of the same, but that's it, so I'll see you again soon, bye for now!